Welcome back. In this new series, we'll create practical projects with React. If you want to learn the fundamentals of React, check out my channel page for my complete Introduction to React course. If you have a grasp of the fundamentals, let's dive into today's project, which will be a Markdown editor. This is what the finished app will look like. As the user types Markdown in the editor, a preview is rendered in the right part of the screen. Word count and character count is also displayed in the upper right corner of the editor. The user can also download the markdown file he's been working on using this button. I'll start with my index file. It only renders the app component and imports the index.css file. The index.css file contains my global styles. It imports the Roboto font from Google Fonts. I define some color variables for my app in the root. You also see some general styles applied to my body like font size, font color, and default background color. I set the box sizing to all elements and pseudo elements to border box. After that, I have some basic typography styles, which define the spacing between paragraphs, font size, font weight, and line height of the main heading elements. I set my anchor text color to white, and I have some button styles for my download button. Lastly, I have some styles for my horizontal lines and two spacing utilities for my margins. That's it for global styles. Let's now see the app component, which is the real application entry point. My app wraps everything in the markdown provider component. Inside of it, I have the main layout component, which has two columns that wrap the editor and preview components. Let's start with the provider. You can see my folder structure is pretty basic. I have a providers folder which contains my single provider and a components folder for all of my components. This works alright for a project of this scale. Let's take a look at the markdown provider component. It creates a context and the component itself just stores the markdown as a state variable. The context then provides this state variable to its consumers. I've also added a custom hook, use markdown, which is just syntactic sugar for the use context hook. It's easier to read and you don't have to import the context and use context hook everywhere. Instead, you just import this custom hook and you're ready to use markdown and set markdown. Let's export the main layout component now. It defines two components, main layout and the column component, which is a property of the main layout object. Both components are just presentational and they provide a wrapping tag with a class name. Their accompanying styles define a flex layout. The columns will grow evenly. In this case, there are just two, so they will each occupy 50% of the horizontal real estate of the screen. They also have a border between them. As you can see, the first column contains the editor component. And if we drill down to the editor component, the first component it renders is the title bar. Let's check that out. The title bar is a presentational component. It renders the title, and an aside text to the right. They're both separated from the content beneath them with a horizontal line. The bar uses a flex layout. The title and aside portions are justified with space between, and the alignment on the vertical axis is set to center. In the editor component, besides a title bar, we also have a text area. That's the actual editor. You can also use a content editable element. But for this simple markdown editor, which is not really a YC wick, this works just fine. The text area is a controlled input. Its value and onChange event handlers are set to the markdown and set markdown values we get from the markdown context provider. In addition to the markdown value, the update markdown event handler also sets the words and chars state variables. We use two functions to calculate the number of words and the number of characters. The characters function is very straightforward. It just returns the length of the string. The word matching function matches all words with a regex and returns their length. This will work for all Latin languages. If you want to support all languages, you will need to implement a more sophisticated method. Finally, the editor component contains the download file button. On click, it fires the download file function that creates a link element, a bop, sets the link element's target to that bop, and then clicks the link element to start the download. The styles of the editor include the wrapper that sets the layout to a flex column. The text area's default styles are reset, and we set flex grow to one. 
so that the text area will occupy as much vertical space as is available. The final component in the app is the preview. It gets the markdown from the context using the use markdown hook. It also uses the title bar component and wraps the markdown with the react markdown component. This component is an npm dependency that we use. It parses markdown to HTML elements so we can render it on the screen, which is exactly what we want for this preview component. As you can see, this component is wrapped in a preview scroll class. If we see the styles for it, it has the same layout as the editor component, where it has flex grow one so that it grows vertically as much as possible. This is the entire application. The final result is this two column layout. As I type in my editor component, I get a render preview of my markdown in my preview component. I can do headlines, separators, lists, and many others. When I click download, I download my markdown file. This markdown editor is pretty basic. You could practice adding more features to it. Some ideas would be to add an edit file name functionality before you download the markdown file. You could also implement an upload file functionality so that the user can upload a markdown file from their file system. Let me know about your experience if you decide to implement some of these in the comments below. You can also ask questions there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for similar project videos and other courses and tutorials.